Now, um, I want to say briefly about the difference between uh, counseling and teaching. Why do we want to do counseling? The reason is because uh, when people are ready, then we can teach them. But many times people are not ready. We want to help them spiritually, help them with their family problem or other problems or raise them up uh, to serve God. Well, we want to communicate and listen to them and find out how they are. Then we need to have counseling. We have listening and responding to the feelings and responding to their needs instead of just talking ourselves. Uh, I want to say this, that as pastors, sometimes we have the habit of talking too much that we uh, want to just people listen to us and uh, we, we just teach and uh, now when people have special needs when they they want us to respond to the situation then we need to listen and respond to them and counsel them to guide them and the the theory of counseling is like this that people are here at this level and you want them to go to a high level you want to go them to go to a high level that it you don't just tell them instantly that you can go up there because people cannot reach that level they have to take time to go up slowly uh, with the spiritual life or with marriage life or ministry uh, or the personal growth they all need to grow so we need to uh, listen to them respond to their needs and the feelings and then guide them gradually okay so these are the steps of counseling. First is build up the trusting relationship. Now we talked about this last time, so I'm not going to talk about this in detail, but basically to let the person feel accepted. It's like when the Heavenly Father tries to change us, He just doesn't, doesn't just force us to change. He guides us to change. He guides us to, uh, to uh, help us realize our sins and problems and guide us step by step to grow. So we uh, want to build up the trusting relationship so that we, uh, the counselee trusts the counsellor. And God has helped us to trust in Him by moving in our heart many times to guide us, to encourage us, to give us peace and love. This is how God has uh, given us a trusting relationship. And we will feel comfortable coming to God because of His love and tenderness and his uh, listening to us okay and then the second step very important is listening now i i'm going to go through this very very quickly don't assume that we know the counselee because there are many things they uh that we might not know we need to ask questions and find out and then um excuse me let me move this a little bit Okay, here, and then while listening, pay attention to the content, uh, the way the, of, of expression and the feelings, the key words, the body language and action. So li uh, listen to the whole person, watch the whole person. And number three, manage our own emotions that we're not affected by them, that we don't have anger toward them or impatience toward them because of their problems. And four, concentrate in listening. Don't judge or think of how to respond. Listen to all the details, what he is feeling, uh, uh, what he is um, thinking, what are his problems, uh, what does he want to overcome, does he have motivation. We need to listen to all this. Now, many people don't have the patience to listen. Uh, let me use this illustration again, because listening is very difficult to learn. As I said, I, I have taken counseling courses in the seminary and I found that after that, I still haven't learned how to listen. It was in a, uh, a chaplaincy program for one year that we have, you know, face-to-face uh, -face with a teacher that he guides us and also in small groups and in also in verbatim reports that we learn to uh, listen. We learn, you know, how we have not listened and how we can listen. And it's very important. Now, let me use this illustration. If you have some problem, like you have been hurt by your spouse, 
or you have a lot of pressure in your ministry and you try to talk to another pastor about it. And if the pastor just immediately say, let's pray, and you have to pray, you don't pray enough, uh, then you, you say, I have a lot I want to tell you, but you haven't listened to me yet. Then there is a problem there that the person is not listening to us. He's just telling us what he thinks we need. So in counseling, we don't want to just tell people what we think they need. We want to guide them. We want to listen to them, know where they are, and then guide them step by step to change and grow uh, and manage the problems. Okay, and then five, listen for what the counselee says about his condition, the cause of his, the problem, the reasons of his feeling, and all the details. And it's okay to write down the, what he says. So we want to listen to what the counselee says about his condition uh, and the cause of the problem. Why does he have the problem? The reasons of his feelings. Uh, why does he feel that way? And all the details. And it's okay to write down what he says. And then why many people have problem listening? Because we have little patience to listen and we have little compassion on people. We don't have much compassion. We don't care much about the people. Um, you might say, I do care about them. I, I bring them to Jesus. But we don't care enough to want to listen to them. I use an illustration of listening to our spouse. Has your spouse said that you don't listen to me? You just talk, you just say what you want. And if I reverse it, have you noticed your spouse have problem listening to you. When you have some problem, he or she just get angry or get frustrated and he just wants you to do something. And then it makes us feel very frustrated because the other person is not listening. So remember how people have not listened to us and how that makes us feel. And at the same time, when we don't listen to people, we give people the same feeling. So we want to listen to them and respond to their needs and the feelings, respond to them. Okay, and then some reason why people have a problem listening is because we have a preset agenda that we want to change people. We want to change people a certain way so we don't have the patience to listen. We just want them to follow us. And, uh, and then many people are not used to listening. That Many people have problem listening. Even when someone says something a few times, he still cannot catch what he wants to say. And I want to say this, um, that uh, we need to practice. Have you practiced? I, I told you to practice uh, in these few days after the last session. I hope you take, st you take time to practice listening uh, to your spouse, to some church members, and see if they say that you really understand them. Okay, now, if someone says this to you, so here uh, we have this example. So if someone says this to you, what are they feeling and how can we respond? Now I want to say sometimes we can guess what the people feel, but we still should ask questions to confirm. Because sometimes we assume that people feel some way, uh, we, uh, it might not be correct. But there is uh, a degree of uh, truthfulness when we can uh, sometimes we can guess what they feel but then uh, we can start with that and then ask more questions for instance someone says I feel left out that I someone uh, leave me out someone doesn't pay attention to me so this person uh, how would he feel so we we can imagine if someone leave us out if someone doesn't listen to us if someone doesn't pay attention to us, doesn't help us, how do we feel? We might feel lonely. We might feel sad. We might feel disappointed in a person. So there are a few possible feelings that the person might have. And some people might have anger. The person, leave me out. He doesn't listen to me. So we can find out, but we can say, oh, he might, you know, you look at the expression. He might feel frustrated, he might feel sad, he might feel uh, lonely. So we, we can find out if we don't uh, 
don't know exactly, then we, we can ask them, uh, do you feel sad or do you feel angry? Do you feel uh, you're not, you know, the person despises you and makes you feel uh, unimportant and uh, being stepped on so that you are not someone important and you feel insecure? Okay, so, so we'll find out and so what uh, uh, some possible feelings and you can practice this with someone and, and see if you can understand, understand the feelings and, and add, find out about the feelings, okay? And then the next thing, if someone says, people don't care about me. So what would be some possible feelings? If someone don't care about me, so we think for ourselves, if someone don't care about me, how would I feel? that we might feel um, being uh, despised, we feel uh, left out, we feel uh, sad, we might feel frustrated or angry, uh, we feel insecure. So there are possible feelings. And how can we respond? We can say, if we find out how he feels, we can say, oh, I'm sorry, they, they don't care about you and make you feel uh, sad and that you feel uh, you're not being uh, treasured and so you feel unhappy. You feel, now we have to pay attention what are the feelings. Some are facts. Facts are what? People don't like me. That's a fact. It's a fact, not a feeling. The feeling is, if people don't like me, we might feel sad, insecure, angry. Uh, these are feelings. But if people just say, oh, people don't like me, that's a thinking. They think that people don't like them. It's a, it's, they think it's a fact. So we have to discern what are feelings, what are uh, facts or they, what they think, what they think are the facts. They, it might not be a fact, but what they think are the facts. And a lot of times people just respond to us with what they think instead of how they feel. Now, why is it important? Now, think about it. Now, I hope you all have patience to learn this. This is very, very important. First, it will help your relationship with your spouse. That when you listen to your spouse, in the past, you might feel very frustrated. You say, so many times I listened and responded to her and she still says, said that I did not listen to her. The reason is because we have not found out about her feelings and we have not responded to the feelings. So I hope you have the patience. We want to take more time to practice listening. So uh, when someone feels, you know, find out it's not a feeling they found out that people don't care about them so they might feel sad they feel unhappy oh no one like me so I feel unhappy now no one like them is a thinking or a fact sometimes it's a thinking sometimes it's a fact now if it's a fact that actually no one likes him a thinking is even some people who are very successful might think no one like them. So we, we have to discern this. I hope you understand the dif difference. If you have a question, you can write them down. First, it can be a thinking and it might not be a fact. And next, it can be a fact and also a thinking. I, I use an illustration again. Like a pastor, uh, you know, maybe uh, one or two persons have responded to him and say you're doing well but the other pe people don't respond and this pastor might think most people don't like me except these two now it's a thinking he thinks but it might be that the people don't have the habit of telling him whether they like him or not whether they accept him or not whether they find the teaching helpful so they didn't tell him it doesn't mean the people might not like him they might, you know, they, uh, they might like him, they might not like him, 
And but this pastor could have in, an interpretation. The interpretation is it, his thinking. The interpretation is that no one likes me. Most people don't like me. These are interpretation. It would affect him and he will have feelings. What feeling would he have if a pastor thinks that most people don't like him? Then he would feel uh, sad. He would feel depressed. He would feel uh, a sense of failure that he's failing and he, he feels uh, disappointed because he's failing, that he's not successful. So he can have different feelings. Now when people just say people don't like me, they are just saying what they think. In, they don't say the feelings. Seeing out the feeling is very important to know what the person is going through inside. Because the person might have anger, he has frustration. I work so hard and you still don't like me, and you, you don't accept me, he might have anger. He might feel guilty. Why does he feel guilty? He feels guilty because he says, I have not done well as a pastor. I have not done a good job. So people don't like me. So I feel guilty. It, or he might feel hopeless. No hope because I cannot do anything. He might feel disappointed in himself and in other people. He might say, well, I cannot change them. I cannot help them. Or disappointed in them, themselves. These are all different. They say, I'm useless. I cannot serve well. Now, now this is a thinking. And then the feeling would be uh, that they feel disappointed in themselves or disappointed in other people. This is a feeling. Disappointment. Oh, I cannot do it. And so there's a sense, a feeling of disappointment. Now, maybe a number of you have not learned this, have not heard this at all. Let me ask you this question. When you think about your ministry, do you feel happy, excited? I'm excited to go back to my ministry. I'm excited for the preaching next week. I'm excited to talk to the people. I'm excited to raise them up to serve God. Or do you feel frustrated? It's hard to change them. Or you feel disappointed in yourself or in them or you might feel unhappy you might feel pressure that oh a lot of pressure from ourselves or from other people that you might feel oh there's pressure to do better but i cannot do better now you might have to watch this if you have a chance to watch this video again by watching it on facebook to listen uh, to what I explained about the difference between the thinking and the feeling. And when a person starts to talk about his feeling, he's opening himself up. Now, women, women have a uh, stronger tendency to talk about their feelings. Women talk about their feelings more. They will say, I'm unhappy. And men have problems talking like that. They will, they will just say, he's not good. They're not good. They don't obey me. They don't do well. This of thinking, I think they don't do well. It's, it's what they think is the fact. You know, thinking is what they think that is a fact. It's a, a factual thing. It might not be real. You know, he think is a fact. But feeling is what's happening inside their heart, inside themselves. Why is it important to find out the feelings? Because the feelings are what affect us. Many Christians and pastors might feel disappointed, even though they talk about rejoice in the Lord, rejoice in the Lord. But inside them, they might feel disappointment. We need to manage these feelings, handle it, so that we can restore our joy. So it's very important for us first to find out our feelings before we can bring healing to ourselves. Okay, and then number three, I always fail. So if someone says nobody cares about me, 
what can we say? First, we want to respond to the feelings. We say, oh, uh, we can ask them, do you feel disappointed? Do you feel sad? Do you feel lonely? And if the person, now we can, uh, uh, we can assume in a way they have some sense of uh, loneliness. So we can check it out. We, we can check it out and say, so they don't care about you, does it, does, uh, do you feel lonely? Do you feel sad? So we can ask them the feelings and let them respond and then we'll say, oh, that makes you feel sad that <clears throat> the people don't care about you and you feel uh, disappointed in them and in you and you feel unhappy about it. So we respond to the feelings by naming the feelings and then supporting them. But later we'll talk about supporting them, saying, oh, I know this is difficult, I know it's hard for you, and God cares about you, and I care about you, and uh, there's a way out, there's a way to manage this problem, and uh, we can find out what we can do, and there's hope, there's always hope, so this is support, to give them hope that there is a way to handle it. Okay, now, now if you have questions, please ask, uh, write them down. Okay, and then someone may say, I always fail. I can never do anything right. So if someone fails, what feeling does he have? He could have a number of feelings. Now, we must realize this. We can, people can have different kinds of feelings for the same thing that happened. Just think about for yourself that if you have failed, what, what do you feel? Now, many people will feel sad. They feel um, that they are, you know, that thinking is they're useless, so they feel unhappy. They feel uh, guilty about themselves because I'm not doing well. They might feel desperate, no hope. I cannot do it. So we want to learn to get used to finding out our feelings. So in a ministry, how does it make you feel that your feelings? Uh, in your marriage, what are the feelings that you have? Um, for instance, someone says, my spouse doesn't treat me right. My wife doesn't treat me right. She's always yelling at me and nagging me then what would be the feelings? The feeling would be sad, sometimes it frustrated, angry, hopeless, there's no hope, desperate, that we don't know what, what is the way out. So there could be different feelings for the same thing that happened to us. So when someone says, I always fail, then we say, oh, you must feel very, you must feel unhappy, right? We can ask, right? Is that true that you feel unhappy? Uh, now, some people could feel angry. Why? When they fail, why do they feel angry? They say, it's the fault of my parents. They did not help me. So I fail a lot. They never encourage me. They never teach me. So I fail. So they may have anger. Uh, for each person is different and uh, if you can name people's feeling or, or ask them how they feel and then they say the feeling and then you respond to them they feel connected to you so your spouse your f church members your family members will say oh you know my feelings I want to say this if someone knows your feeling you feel accepted, you feel more secure, you feel happy that someone knows your feeling and can name it. Then you feel you're not alone, that you are cared for by someone. So I hope you realize, you know, that you will all have, we will all want people to understand our feelings. Let me use an illustration. 
a pastor works very hard on his ministry and still face problems, failure, and he tells his wife, not too many people come to church, the people are not listening to me, the people don't love God, they don't pray much, and tell the wife. And then the wife says, the wife says, you have to pray more, you don't pray enough. How would he feel? He feel maybe uh, misunderstood that he felt lonely because or frustrated because the wife doesn't understand him. But if the wife says, oh, I know, it must be very difficult for you. You must feel sad and happy that the people are not responding to you, that you will feel unhappy, you feel uh, that it's difficult. Now, difficult is a thinking, that is a fact. So when he thinks it's difficult, and then he will feel frustrated, helpless. He cannot help the situation. So these are feelings. And if your wife can name your feeling and say, you must be very unhappy, you must feel pressure. Because some people could feel pressure because of the failure. He wants to do better, but he cannot do better. So he has a sense of pressure. So I hope you you start to learn this. And then in your messages and in your conversation with people, you can respond to people. If the person says, I always fail, you say, oh, that must make you feel very unhappy. That must be true because hap unhappy feeling is a, uh, a general feeling that he fails, so he feels unhappy. But he might have some other feeling. You can ask him, so how do you feel now? He might say, I feel angry because my church members don't give me a chance. They always reject me. So I feel angry of the responses. So he might have different feelings. Some people will say it's wrong to be angry. It's true. But he does have the feeling. We need to understand our feelings before we can help manage our feelings. So we, we need to understand that. We need to understand that uh, and a person talk about his feeling, we don't want to correct them and say, you should not feel angry. We should not say, you should not feel angry. But we can say, I understand that you feel unhappy, you feel hopeless, you feel desperate. Now, unhappy is a general feeling, but hopeless is not a general feeling. You know, it's stronger. So if a pastor, you think he feels hopeless, you might ask him, uh, a weaker word of hopeless is des uh, of disappointed. Do you feel disappointed? And then disappointed can be in himself or in the church. So do you feel disappointed? Uh, are you disappointed with someone or with yourself? So we can find out. Now if we can communicate pe with people like that, then our messages would make people feel good would touch the heart. The Holy Spirit can touch our heart because the Holy Spirit knows our feeling and He responds to our feeling and comfort our feeling. So Jesus said to the woman with 12 years bleeding, He said, take heart, relax, don't worry. So Jesus cared about her feeling and then He said, daughter, to comfort her that you are important in my sight. I am your father, you are my daughter. So that comfort her. So we, I'm sure we all like the comfort of the Holy Spirit. We all like the feeling when we praise God and we feel comforted. I'm sure that we all like that feeling. So can we convey that to people? Instead of conveying, always saying, you have to pray more, you have to obey God, you have to do evangelism. All these are true. But a lot of times, some pastors just put pressure on people. The people... Now, what feelings would people have if the pastor just give pressure to people and accuse people? You didn't pray enough. You didn't do evangelism enough. You are lazy Christians. What feelings would the people have? Do the people, would the people have feeling of, oh, I'm excited, I want to serve God? They won't. They feel unhappy because they are accused. The pastor says they are lazy. Now, they might be lazy. 
if we tell them you are lazy, you are too lazy, it it doesn't make them feel good. So we we don't want to hurt the feelings while helping them. And we can say, God loves you, and God cares about you. God wants to raise you up to serve God better. And whenever you do anything, even a cup of cold water, God is very happy. So we all can serve God more because. God is happy with a cup of cold water that we give to someone. So if we tell people about Jesus, even if they don't believe in Jesus, God is still very, very happy. Now I take a lot of time to explain this because as I, as I said, I went through courses of counseling in a seminary. I still could not understand feelings. And later I understood more. So. I want to explain this more fully so that you understand this and then you can respond to people. Let me ask you this question. How many people understand your feelings? How many people understand your feelings? Now if your spouse understands your feelings, you are very blessed. If your spouse can respond to your feelings and care about your feelings, you are blessed because you have someone to care about you. But a lot of people say, my spouse only blame me more, accuse me more, and yell at me because I don't do well enough. So people don't, they, they feel disappointed because, because people don't listen to them. But if we listen to people, people will feel comforted. And also the members will feel comforted too. We can tell the members that I realize you are facing difficulties. You feel uh, disappointed in our economy now, right now, I'm sure that we all are suffering in some way that I know that it's difficult for you now and you might feel disappointed or uh, you feel unhappy uh, that in this situation that we, if we can respond to the feelings of the people, people then sense our care and they will listen to us more and then we can talk about God's feeling toward them too. God cares about you. God wants to comfort you. God wants to give you comfort and strength and let you know that you are loved by Him and I love you too. I care about you too. And God wants to comfort you so that you have strength to go forward. So we want to say positive things from God to bless them, to encourage them. And then we can encourage people to obey God by telling them, whatever you do for God, God is very happy. See how you listen to the message? God is very happy with that. So we can encourage that. And then if you go out and bless people, God is very happy and God will bless you and God remembers what you do and He'll reward you. So these are positive things we can say to people to encourage people to obey God. Instead of saying, you didn't obey God, you didn't preach the gospel, you didn't care about people. This doesn't make people feel encouraged. In the Bible, we can see a lot of encouragement. That Paul said, you know, God, I pray that you understand the depth and the, and the height, uh, the width of God's love. How great His love is. How much He loves you and cares about you. That He wants to bless you. He loved you before you were created. He or, already chose you. So in the Bible, there's a lot of grace of God. What God has done for us, His wonderful blessing for us, His heart for us, His nature, His wonderful nature. It's all blessing us. So we want to be able to respond to people's feelings and give them ways to encourage them so that when they, after they hear the message, they feel happy and encouraged. Now I hope you feel hopeful when you go home with your spouse and the church members that you can build up the relationship of the people by listening to the feelings and responding to the feelings and encourage them and let them know you know their feelings and they, you know that they are unhappy, they are pressured. So we can name their feelings and then the people will feel happy. Okay, so I hope you, you catch that importance of understand, understanding people's feelings and responding to the feelings and caring about the feelings. Okay, and then number four. Now, I always fail. How do we respond to such a person? Now, some people will say, uh, uh, 
you didn't work hard enough so you failed that's an accusation and uh, but we can say I know you are unhappy because you fail much and when I hear that uh, when I heard that you you are unhappy because you have failed much that I sense that you have you want to do better right do you want to do better and I appreciate that and I applaud that you want to do better that is great you want to do better that means you have the motivation to improve and I'm sure there are ways to improve so we are giving them hope and we are appreciating the good qualities in their lives that's something we need to learn to appreciate any good qualities of the counselee or anyone who meets our spouse the church members always look for the good qualities of them and then we can tell them how much we like the good qualities and God likes the good qualities so they can be happy because of these good qualities okay so we can uh, we can say yes I know you feel unhappy and uh, but I see your motivation to change I see that there is hope for you and I'm happy for you I'm sure there is a way God can help you to do better in the future we can think through the process how we can do better I hope we all understand the importance of understanding the feeling and responding to the feelings okay and then number four I have no real friends nobody likes me so if once someone says says that he would have a number of feelings he would feel disappointed in himself and in other people he would feel sad he would feel lonely he would feel uh, a sense of failure that he is failing he feel uh, he feel that he's um, that he's a person no he thinks that he's a useless person nobody likes him then he feel despised he feel despised he's not important and he feel despised by other people and despised by himself he feel hopeless no hope so there are different feelings when someone doesn't have real friends uh, now sometimes people will accuse them in the heart to say we don't you don't know how to relate to people you always talk loudly you always accuse people so you don't have real friends we might have this accusation inside our heart then we want to instead of saying well you haven't done well we want to find out the good qualities of, of the person to encourage them first we want to say oh you must feel unhappy you feel disappointed in the people and in yourself you feel maybe uh, desperate there's no way out you feel hopeless maybe so we want to find out the feelings and then we respond to the feeling it must be unhappy must be uh, difficult for you to to have these feelings inside you that you uh, you don't have good friends and so you feel unhappy about that so so we can say the difficulties and then we can give them hope we can give them empathy empathy means we feel the feelings yeah I know that now you are feeling unhappy and there, uh, you feel hopeless and God always want to give you hope and he can raise you up now this is different from you have to pray you have to work on yourself that is command commanding people to do something but we can tell them God cares about them that is giving hope God cares about you and there is a way out there's a way that you can have more friends and I noticed that at least you can talk to me and you can talk to other people too that you can you have the ability to make friends and we can find out what are some difficulties and we can find out so we want to respond to the feeling and and responding respond to the hopelessness the sense of hopelessness that there is hope to change that uh, something can change okay and then someone says I want to give up so this is a feeling of uh, despair there's no hope hopelessness and despair 
I feel very unhappy and uh, so this person um, if he says I, I want to give up is a very strong word we know that this person is facing great difficulty sometimes for situation like that we can first name the feelings I know you want to give up you must feel very disappointed tell me about your feelings we can ask them to tell us about their feelings and then we can respond oh yes you must feel very unhappy and disappointed uh, you must uh, think that think that there is no hope there is no way out and uh, and I want to tell you God will give us a way now instead of saying what you do we say God will do it for you God will help you and I'm sure that there is a way out for you so to uh, respond to the feelings and give them hope and and feel the feelings and say yes I feel that you know uh, that you you want to give up you, in your hope in your heart there must be a strong sense of hopelessness that you feel desperate if you don't know what to do okay I miss my parents this is another one I miss my parents so this is a, a feeling of sadness sometimes it's grief so uh, I miss my parents and then instead of saying you don't have to miss them <laughs> we can say uh, you must feel unhappy you miss them you wish they were here but they're not here so you feel uh, if the parents have passed away then they if they feel grief and if the uh, parents have gone away to another place then you you feel unhappy you feel lonely so we can name it and then we can find out what happened and then we can uh, find a way to comfort them and encourage them okay I dare not speak in front of people so this he has a feeling of fear but there are different reasons of fear sometimes it's because the person uh, think so we find out the thinking he think he cannot talk well so he dare not speak in front of people he think the people don't like him he think he doesn't you know uh, he has nothing to share so he doesn't want to speak in front of people that he might feel shy he might feel use think he's useless so he feel he's um, feel hopeless that he has no hope uh, he cannot do anything well so a sense of failure okay so so what can we say we can say oh I heard that you you're unhappy you're you fear talking in front of people do you you think that you cannot talk right and uh, but when I listen to you I see that uh, you can learn to talk better you can learn okay now I hope all the ministers here present would learn how to give hope to people instead of saying you didn't do it how to give hope to people I've sinned too much some people immediately will say okay, kneel down and repent now that's true you need to do that but first we can ask him respond to the feelings why do we respond to the feelings we're not saying that it's right to, to sin, but we understand the feelings, they feel accepted by us. They feel accepted and they feel comforted. It's like when the Holy Spirit comes to us, He makes us feel accepted, that He cares about us, He accepts us even when we are a sinner, even when our sins, we just sin, that God still cares about our feelings. So we want to give them the same feeling. You must feel very unhappy you feel guilty but we can find out the exact feelings and then uh, it's difficult for you and and then um, then we can pray you know do you want to repent in front of God and ask him to forgive you and he said yes then we say that's very good when you repent you truly repent the whole heaven will rejoice because of you the whole heaven will rejoice because of you so 
it's a good news that you want to repent and ask God to forgive you. He's happy to forgive you. So I'm always giving hope. God is happy to forgive you. When you repent, the whole heaven will rejoice with you, over you. Instead of saying, you have to confess every sin. Now that's true too. We can tell them that. But we don't say that as soon as they say, I've sinned too much. We don't start with that. We can start with, uh, I can see that you are sorry for your sins. I, I'm very thankful for that. You feel s s sad for your sins, that God is happy to forgive you. And so do you want to come to God now? And when you confess your sin, He will for sure forgive you and He will cleanse your sins and then you can feel free. And you have the motivation not to sin again because sins will cause you to feel very guilty and feel uh, strength, uh, strengthless, feel very weak. Okay, I have no hope in life. Now this person is very desperate, no hope, so hopeless and desperate. Then we say, oh, you must feel very unhappy. Tell me about it. What has happened to you? So we want to find out more. And when he talks, we want to uh, feel the feelings. If I were him, how would I feel? If I have no hope at all in life, how would I feel? So we want to accept the feelings. And then, you know, we have empathy. I know it must, you must feel very unhappy and it has affected you. Uh, and then give hope. God wants to give you hope. God is a God of hope. He has a way to bless you, to strengthen you, to bless you, to give you hope. Okay, now, um, here, guide the counselee to express. So guide the person to express, to say more. So how can we guide them? First, use questions to guide. How do you feel? Do you feel despised, unfair, angry, guilty? So you um, ask them a certain feeling. Do you feel that way? To guide them. And then they will talk more when we ask them what the feeling is. Repeat what he has said to confirm and to invite him to say more. So we can repeat. Like he said, I feel very unhappy today. Then we can say, oh, you feel very unhappy today? So repeat what we said. Uh, I feel disappointed in myself. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that you feel disappointed in yourself. So repeat what the person said. Then he would talk more. Reflecting. Use a different way to express what the counselee has just said. You feel angry because he said that to you, right? So we, we put in a way of a different way of interpret uh, of ex of uh, um, what he expressed, uh, adding in some interpretation. So uh, the person uh, says, "Well, he just said that to me, and then I'm very unhappy." So then we then we we can say, "Oh." So he said that to you and made you feel unhappy or made you feel angry, right? So we interpret that and then put it in a different way. What your husband said made you feel angry, right? So if the wife says that, oh, my husband said that to me and I feel very unhappy, I feel very angry now, then we uh, summarize it by saying, oh, you feel very un angry because your wife, your husband said that to you, right? And then you uh, feel sad he has left you because um, the, the wife said that uh, the husband has left her and then she looks very unhappy and she said, oh, I'm very unhappy, unhappy. I want to cry, I cannot sleep. Then we can name it and say, oh, you must feel very unhappy and sad and uh, that you, your husband has left you. You feel very disappointed and feel very sad, right? So we can say it in a different way. You feel guilty because you have not helped uh, him much, that you did not help him in that situation. Now this happened a lot when, uh, for instance, someone didn't help, A didn't help B, and then B got hurt. Uh, hurt. Or A didn't get help B, 
B and then B got sicker and sicker. Or A didn't help B and then B died. So A would feel very guilty. So, so you feel guilty because you didn't, you, uh, you have not helped him much, right? Now, even when people hasn't helped the person much, we still want to respond to the feeling and comfort them and say, oh, you must feel very unhappy because uh, you didn't help him much. And now he's sicker, he's weaker, and so you feel very guilty about it. So we can ask them if they have these uh, feelings. Uh, and then respond to them, uh, summarize what they say. Okay, guide uh, number four, respond to and accept his feeling instead of analyzing. It is very natural for you to feel sad now. So we accept it and say, oh, it's natural. It's, uh, in your situation, it's natural for you to feel sad when someone yelled at you. I know that you miss your mother, so we accept the feeling. Now, many times in funerals, people would just say, don't cry, don't cry. But instead we can say, I know you miss her. I know you feel very unhappy because uh, she has died already. She has left already. So, um, so we name the feeling and accept that feeling. And then the person would talk more. So respond to the feeling and he will, he will uh, because he feels accepted, so he will talk more about his feelings. Uh, I feel sad for you. So I feel the feeling. I feel sad. So we can say we have the same feeling too. Because I heard what happened to you. I feel sad too. I'm sorry what hap that happened to you. So we feel sorry that this happened to, to, to him. Now feel sorry doesn't mean we have done something wrong. We just feel unhappy for him. You have been hurt deeply. So we name the feeling. You have been hurt deeply. Uh, that... Uh, I know that you feel angry now. Okay, and then empathy. And support. Empathy is the ability to understand and share the feelings of others. So that we can feel the feelings and, and uh, sh share the feeling. And we can tell them that we uh, sense the feeling and we feel empathy we feel uh, uh, we feel your feeling okay and there are different levels of empathy there is a primary em empathy and the advanced level of empathy primary empathy is empathetic toward the feeling expressed by the counselee so the person see, says I feel sad oh you feel sad because that happened to you and the person says I feel hurt so you feel hurt and also we can say, oh, I feel this hurtful feeling myself. When you are hurt by someone, I feel hurts also. So we can feel the same feeling. That's one way of empathy to say, I feel the feelings of yours. But what the uh, counseling says. And then advanced level of empathy. Empathetic that the situation has caused a deeper impact on the person. So we are responding to a deeper influence on the person. For instance, your marriage problem has made you feel like a failure. You feel that you cannot do anything well. So your marriage, because the marriage problem, it makes you feel like a failure. You feel hopeless. You feel you're not doing anything well. Uh, so you feel unhappy now. So so uh, it's going deeper, going deeper in the sense that, oh, you feel like that you are failing. You think that you are, you are uh, a failing husband. You're not doing well enough. So you think that uh, you fail as a husband, you fail as a minister. So that's what after we hear what the person says, the feeling, and we know that it has impacted his self-image, his, uh, uh, his role, about his, the feeling of his role, his role as a husband, oh, I know that you feel very, uh, that you are a, f a f failing husband, you're not doing, you're not a good husband, so you f feel very disappointed in yourself. So, the, 
uh, it has some interpretation that what happened to you has caused a deeper impact in you. For instance, a pastor has not preached a sermon well. He will feel unhappy, guilty. That's a primary empathy. But a deeper empathy would be like saying, oh, you might feel despair in yourself. That you feel, you think you have not done well, you have not preached well, and so you, you feel uh, desperate, you feel hopeless that in the future it will be more and more difficult for you. So we are naming what, how it affects the person. That's advanced level of em empathy, how it affects the person, how it affects him as a pastor, how it affects him as a, as a, a Christian, as a husband and wife. So it has made him feel uh, despair in his, in his role that he's not doing well. So your friend has made you feel you are unwanted and disposable. So you feel unwanted. You feel disposable, that people can dispose of you, that you are useless. So this is advanced level of empathy. It, it means that, that we can name how it affects the person, but we can ask him, is that make, does it make you feel like that? So if to a husband we say, does it make you feel that you are a failing husband? Think you are a failing husband and so make you feel more disappointed in yourself. So that's a deeper impact on the person. Okay, so empathy and support. Now the last point, uh, the same point here, empathy and support. First, we accept the feelings of the counselee. We accept the feelings. We verbalize these feelings and difficulties. We say it out. We empathize what he has experienced. So we, we feel a similar feeling. When the person feels sad, we feel sad too. That we feel his feeling when uh, in his situation. And number four, don't dis and then we don't want to despise the counselee and his difficulties and verbally appreciate how the counselee has shared or has improved. So if the person has shared about this, we say, wow, you are, you are uh, courageous to share this with me. I've said it to people many times that I would say, oh, I appreciate your courage that you would, are willing to share with me and you trust in me. I, I, I appreciate that. So we appreciate what the person has shared and how he has improved. And then number six, tell the counselee that God and we can feel his feeling. So God feel your feeling and I feel your feelings too. So we can uh, empathize with the person. Okay, and then these are more example of empathy here. Empathy and support. We care about his feeling and accept his feelings. I know you're suffering now. Now these are examples here. So this is example from the last page. We care about his feelings and accept his feelings. I know you are suffering now. I know that it was very difficult for you. Uh, and then we name his feelings. I know that you feel hurt, you feel sad, neglected people neglect you, you feel ignored by the people, you feel despised, people despise you, you feel guilty. And if we feel his feeling, we can tell him that in order to let him know that we feel his suffering. I can feel your pain, your sadness, your hurts, your hopelessness. And number four, we can also verify with him to ask him if it's true. It looks like your experience has made you feel despised. So does this experience make you feel despised? That you think the people are despising you, so you feel despised. And you feel suppressed before people are suppressing you. You're, so your whole person is not free. You are under pressure. You feel, is it true that, uh, that you feel hopeless now? That you, uh, you think there is no hope in front of you. And you feel inferior because you, feel, you think you are lower than the other people. So you feel inferior. 
compared to other people. And we let him know that we, are, we will go through the process of healing with him. So we accept the feeling. So we, uh, let's go through this again. So we accept the feelings, verbalize it, empathize what he has experienced. We feel the same feeling and we don't despise and appreciate him and tell that God and we can feel his feeling. And then we say, we care about your feeling, we accept your feeling, and we can name it. And then if we feel his feeling, we can tell him that, so that he knows that uh, we feel the feelings. And number four, we can also verify with him, uh, find out if it's true. It looks like you have feel hurts, you have feel uh, hopeless. And is that true? And then number five, we let him know that we will go through the process of healing with him. And there is hope. There is hope that you can uh, be healed. Okay? Now, I'm going to stop for 15 minutes so you can uh, ask questions, send your questions in, and then I can respond to you. Please, each group will send me responses constantly so I know what's happening. Okay? Let us pray to ask God for to open our heart to feel the feelings of people. And first we feel our own feelings too. Oh Lord Jesus, we thank you because you feel our feelings, you know our feelings, you care about our feelings, and you respond to our feelings. Please help us to realize that you are God who empathizes with us, you f with us. You feel your f our feelings. So we can trust in you. Please Lord, help us right now to bring our feelings to you that we can be healed by you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're